How you learn software is ultimately something that's going to be pretty unique to you. At the end of the day, the way I learn is not necessarily going to be the way that you learn, but I think it's worth giving you the perspective on how I like to learn things and how I've ended up where I am. I'm 20 years old. I'm a staff back and engineer. I've been pretty successful in a self-taught way. Built out Insider Viz, did all this stuff. I've done pretty well for myself, I think. So... I wanted to give my perspective on how I learn things, and I think that really starts with, for me, there have been two really distinct stages of my understanding of what I know and the way I've been learning things. So way back when, about four years ago, I was first learning how to program, first learning how to develop stuff, and I needed to have my hand held a lot. I did not understand anything. I was super new. I basically couldn't do anything on my own because I had no understanding of any of these concepts. If you ask me even, like, what's the difference between React next and view i couldn't tell you i had no idea that two of them were spas one of them was an mpa those two accurate those meant nothing to me i didn't understand anything at all about web development about back-end development about really much in the programming world so at that point when i was super new and these concepts didn't make much sense to me my sort of the way i currently go about things now wouldn't really work so at that point the way i learned was i would do a lot of tutorials i would do a lot of videos but the key was i wouldn't just watch like a generic tutorial or something i would do something that would actually build something out i remember way back when I think the channel that I used was called uh, Net Ninja. I'll put a picture of that up here, I believe. And he had some really great courses on basically just going through and actually building out apps from zero to production. And that was a big thing for me is I have always been super worried about, I always end up sort of thinking about random stuff like, how is this going to scale in production? How am I going to authenticate users? Is it secure? All these different questions. And I think that these questions are the key. I think that these questions are how I've gotten so good so fast. And I'll talk about that later. And and to be clear, I don't think that I am compared to many other engineers. I think I am not an amazing engineer right now compared to a lot of people, but I think that my ability to learn is pretty good. I can pick things up pretty quickly and I'm able to scale to a pretty wide breadth of knowledge pretty fast. And I'm very confident at this point that if you told me, hey, you need to learn how to do this within a week and then you need to actually produce this for a client or for a project, I could do it. It would probably be hard, but I could do it. Getting back to my original point of actually building real projects, and I think that is super, super critical, is find when you're super new. Obviously, like the advice of, oh, just go read the docs and do this. Well, when you don't know what React is yet, when you don't understand how web development works, when you don't even understand what authentication really means, you don't understand sessions, cookies, tokens, all this, you know, it's not going to help you to go read the Stripe docs. You can read it all day, but you're not even going to understand the underlying concepts there, so you need that foundation so i think that's one thing some people get wrong when they're talking about this stuff is especially more senior people and i'm guilty of this too is you just kind of get in this bubble and you're like oh just go read the docs obviously because that is what i do now and i'll talk about that in a second like i don't really watch videos anymore i just read the docs or watch like opinion piece type things because that's what i enjoy i just like talking about code and stuff but um when you're new, it doesn't mean anything to you. So you need to actually go through and get some experience building this. And these step-by-step -step, hand -holdy type tutorials are super good. But the key when you're doing these things is first and foremost, you need to actually be doing them with whoever's doing it. You can't just watch it. If you try and just watch it, you're not going to learn anything. So you need to actually be doing it with them. And then while you're doing it, you need to try and ask yourself often and repeatedly what are they doing and why are they doing it and try and go ahead and actually implement stuff on top of it or go ahead of them so a great example of this is when i was first trying to get into this stuff i was doing a react course i think it was one of net ninja's react courses and he was doing it in javascript and i wanted to do it in typescript because i had heard about typescript and i'd seen some videos about people talking about it i was super new at this point i didn't really know much but i'd seen people talking about it and i was like oh this sounds really good I I want to have the types because they said it scaled better it made more sense it was better for it was what you should be using now it was the cool new thing so i wanted to be using it so i was like okay great i'm going to do this tutorial but i'm going to use typescript with it and that forced me to learn a lot i had to figure a lot of stuff out and don't get me wrong i didn't do it very well that those code bases are littered with any's all over the place i wasn't really using it correctly but i got into the sort of flow i started to understand what typescript really was what it really did why i should care and it forced me to think about what he was doing in the tutorials at a way deeper level because i couldn't just copy it directly i had to figure out how do i make typescript not yell at me for this so that was super valuable and obviously you can't do that for every tutorial and modern tutorials are probably going to have you know they're gonna have typescript uh, t3 stack type stuff you know it's gonna have the modern stuff and that's good 
uh, you probably don't need to do anything that extreme, but trying to go ahead of them and trying to understand what they're doing is so critical. If you're new and you see them use the use effect hook and you don't really understand that and they give like a brief explanation, but then just move on, you don't really get what use why they used it. Go look it up, go research use effect, go figure out exactly why they're using it. And then you get that deeper understanding of that. And then you can go and apply it yourself later because when you're new and you're trying to get into this stuff, what the way I like to think about it is getting that foundation, getting that foundation of concepts, understanding rest, understanding HTTP, understanding the client versus the server, understanding a single page app, understanding a framework, understanding databases, the pros and cons of SQL, and all these different things. Getting these core foundational concepts under your belt is so important because when you get better, I think for me, as I've gotten better, the way I look at things changes. Once I sort of got out of that beginner and new uh, newbie stage and I'd actually got some projects under my belt, now I don't watch video tutorials anymore. I don't do any of that stuff. Like this week, uh, a good example is last week, I had to implement S3 for a project and I had never used S3 before. Conceptually, I knew what it was. I knew it's, you know, it's bucket storage, obviously, but I'd never actually used the SDK. I had never run AWS locally. I'd never dealt with any of the credentials. I'd never done any of that stuff. And I figured it out within a day, got it shipped. And I ended up actually, my boss looked at it. He's like, hey, you actually implemented this better than we were before because I was using pre-signed URL instead of just normal URLs because I just went and actually read about it. Instead of just copy pasting the code from somewhere, I went into the docs and actually read about it. And that's the key tip that I would give you once you get sort of out of that beginner stage. I think a lot of you probably are, especially if you're here looking at type Go laying type stuff. Well, I wouldn't expect a lot of super new beginners to be doing Go stuff. So the way I see it is the key is you need to try and just actually go straight to the docs and understand these technologies from their creators and then implement them accordingly. That's how I found the pre-signed URLs. That's how I figured out how to actually do this stuff and that's how I was able to make it better. So when you get better, you do the same thing. You ask these questions about why is this happening? Why are they telling me to do this? If they, if one of the, if the docs is showing you a code snippet and you understand five out of 10 lines, well, go figure out what those other five are doing and then come back and actually implement it. Don't, don't just copy pasting code blindly that you don't know what it's, it's actually doing um, within reason. I mean, there's some places where it's like, I don't really care all that much. Like with the Stripe uh, webhooks is a really good example. Like all the stuff that they do to like parse the webhooks and that kind of thing per language, I don't really care. Like I know that that's just generic, like their stuff um, doesn't really matter to me. So I just copy paste that and then fill in my switch cases. That's one example of, yeah, it doesn't really matter. But certainly with like S3 bucket storage, it's super important to understand the AWS SDK. It's super important to understand why I'm uploading or downloading or whatever. So, so that's a very roundabout way of saying that I think if you're new, it's really good to actually, you got to build that foundation and that foundation has to be built in tutorial world. It's just not feasible for someone who's new to go in and build out a new, a full react to do app without having any understanding or experience with web development whatsoever. If they have, don't even have no JS installed on their computer. I mean, seriously, are they really going to be able to figure that all of that stuff out? They're not going to know where to look. They're going to get overwhelmed and they're going to get crushed. So for beginners, tutorials are super important and super helpful. And I think even for those who are, um, new to a certain technology or domain, I think that they're useful too. Like I think a beginner walkthrough on a new language or framework is useful. If I were to tomorrow jump into mobile development, like I wanted to learn Flutter or Kotlin or something like that, um, not Flutter, sorry. Yeah, I don't I don't think Flutter is good. From my friends at work who are mobile developers say Flutter is bad and that you should be using Swift or Kotlin. That's what they tell me. Um, I don't know for sure, but that's what I've been told. So if I were to jump into that, I would probably have to I would have to watch tutorials because I don't know the base concepts I don't have that foundation but once you do have that foundation grow it yourself really try and understand these technologies and try and learn the why why am I using this why am I doing this and it will make you a better developer the more you build the more you ask why the deeper you try and understand the technologies the better developer you will become and the better dev you become, the more opportunities you'll have, the better projects you can make. And uh, yeah, it just makes life, it just makes things, it'll just make you better all around. So hopefully that helps. Um, I know it's very vague in general, but that's sort of my perspective and how I learn things. Um, just try and understand as much as humanly possible and I don't copy paste code blindly. So uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.